Food Heals Podcast, Episode 108. My mom was just the biggest rock star on the planet. She was a total hippie. She was friends with Janis Joplin when she lived in California for a while. No way. That's awesome. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In real cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Today, we are speaking with the founder of Brown Bull, Kim Sudovolsky. Kim is a teacher, certified plant-based cook, and the co-founder of BrownBowl.com. The BrownBowl online program teaches people how to cook amazing vegan foods and find balance between having glowing health and eating deliciously. She founded the program with her husband, Carlos, a medical doctor who specializes in allergies and asthma. After growing up with a very ill parent and developing a difficult relationship with food as a means to deal with turmoil, Kim is now on a mission to help people get back to cooking at home, stop dieting, find balance, and improve their relationship with food while developing healthy eating and living habits that can actually last you a lifetime. But before we get to that, we're going to tell you about today's sponsor. All right, Food Heals Nation. So in case you haven't heard yet, we have a brand new swag bag contest going on. New swag. Yep. We joined Patreon and are giving away 10 swag bags to the first 10 lucky winners who all sign up at the Vitality Vixen $50 level or higher. Yep, the first 10 people are going to get a swag bag full of some of our favorite books, organic health and beauty products, and gifts from some of our favorite sponsors. So to see all the perks of joining us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash foodhealsnation. So if you want to win a swag bag, you got to get to the Vitality Vixen level. How do you do that, Allie? How do you do that? Thank you for asking, Susie. Uh, yeah, you go to patreon.com slash foodhealsnation and you sign up to be a Vitality Vixen. And we're going to give you a Twitter and Facebook shout out once per month as long as you're a patron. And they're going to be on our Twitter account with over 7,000 followers, on our Facebook account with over 5K followers. So this is great if you have a business or something you want to promote. We're going to shout you out. And we'll also follow you on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Plus an info-packed ebook, The Vitality Cleanse, to teach you how to detox in five days with shopping lists and schedule included. Yep. And an exclusive VIP podcast, How to Banish Negative Thoughts and Create a Life of Abundance with Alita McDaniel. I mean, everything that Alita does is gold. So this is worth more than, you know, 50 bucks a month alone. But uh, you'll also get a 10-minute meditation for prosperity and abundance. We have so many amazing perks starting at just $1 a month. And the higher you pledge, the better the perks get. Yep. So like if you go to the business bestie level, you will get everything we just mentioned. Plus a shout out to you or your business on the Food Heals podcast once per month. You can let us brag about you. Yes. You'll also get working with brands to market and monetize your business workshop with Chrissy Heron of Indie Biz Chicks. And if you want more than that, you can become a wellness warrior where you'll get a green smoothie lifestyle and recipe ebook so you can learn to drink your way to a slim, energetic, and youthful life. And an exclusive, it just keeps getting better and better. It does. I just keep saying and, and an exclusive (laughs) VIP podcast, How to Build Your Tribe and Create a Profitable Facebook Group with one of my favorite people, Jill Stanton. Yes, and I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And so you can go to patreon.com slash foodhealsnation and check out all the perks. And don't forget, anyone who pledges to donate $50 or more per month wins a free swag bag shipped right to your door if you're one of the first 10. Be on the first 10, Food Heals Nation. You can do it. It's worth it. It's worth it. You know our swag bags rock, okay? (laughs) And this is just so that we can create more creative content for you, our Food Heals Nation. That's right. We have big things in store. Big things. Next up, our interview with Kim. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Today, we are here with Kim Sujavalski. Kim, who, like many of our guests, became passionate about healing with food, she has a personal story about how she got to where she is today. And it brought her to develop her online program that stresses mindful eating, body positivity, and improving your relationship with food. I mean, it's so important. It's so important. We don't, I don't think we talk enough about that in today's day and age. (laughs) Welcome, Kim. 
Thank you so much. It's such a treat to be here. We're so glad to have you. And so you're so sweet. You started out as one of our fans. I am an absolute fan of the Food Heals podcast. I mean, complete and total fan. Yeah. So if you're a fan and you have a brand and you have a story and you want to reach out to us, you might be on the podcast just like Kim. (laughs) (laughs) So you have your brand, brownbill.com. And tell us really how you got started into the world of healthy eating and holistic health. Oh, gosh. Well, in order for me to tell you the story of how I got to where I am now, I think I just kind of have to go back in time a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, because I think it was my upbringing that really brought me to being this health conscious person that I am today. I guess I don't know, I, I grew up in a very kind of different and unique household. I was raised by a single mom. Mm -hmm. And my mom was just the biggest rock star on the planet. She was a total hippie. She was friends with Janis Joplin when she lived in California for a while. No way. That's (laughs) awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She fought for the rights of grape growers in California. She rallied for peace. She worked with the poor. I mean, she was just the biggest rock star, the best mom ever. She was kind of lady. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, did. I mean, she was just amazing. But unfortunately, you know, life doesn't give you only rainbows and sunshine and wonderful things. She unfortunately had this very, very debilitating illness from the moment she was 11 years old. Mm. She suffered from what is called juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. yes. It's all, it's also called, I think, idiopathic rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, when we think of arthritis, we think of, you know, a grandma or a grandpa and the little stiffness they have in the joints. And maybe they have to take some anti-inflammatory meds or a little painkiller. But Well, it's a different, it, it's a completely, di- sorry to interrupt you, but it's yeah, a yeah. completely different type of arthritis versus the older older person type of arthritis, first of all, idiopathic for our listeners means we don't know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And then juvenile is obviously young. And then rheumatoid arthritis is actually an autoimmune issue that there's rheumatoid arthritis and then juvenile, which are linked, but somewhat different because most kids don't deal with rheumatoid arthritis. So just for our listeners, just to clarify, please go on with your story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's totally right. And the fact that it's an autoimmune disease basically means that your immune system is kind of attacking your own body. Mm -hmm. So in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, what it attacks is specifically the joints. And when this happens at such a young age, so we're talking 11 years old, right? It just completely kind of breaks your body apart. It just starts eating at your joints. You have to go through joint replacement surgeries one after another. It was just really painful. You know, in the best of times, she needed cane or crutches to walk around. And in the worst of times, she was bedridden for months up to a year at one point. She was in a wheelchair. So it really kind of limited her life. And the problem, and I know you're going to relate so much to this story because I've heard so many of these stories in your podcast. The problem was not rheumatoid arthritis only. The problem was all the medication that she had to take to be able to kind of relieve the symptoms. So when you have rheumatoid arthritis and many other autoimmune disorders, you have to take immunosuppressants. So that means they kind of want to quiet down your immune system so that it doesn't keep attacking your body. That means that if you have a cut, if you get a cold, if you have to go through surgery, everything takes twice as long to heal. It's very painful. And you, you're just at risk for so many complications. And yes. she, yeah, so she just, you know, the rheumatoid arthritis, of course, was horrible. But then she got into all of the side effects and all of the complications and even kind of secondary illnesses that she got because of all the medication she was under. And gosh, how I wish I would have known about the amazing power of food when we were going through this. Because of course, she had me and we it was just the two of us. So this being in the situation of life and death all the time, because it was literally life or death, mm. uh, it was she was in and out of hospital rooms, emergency rooms, and I was just a little kid. So this was just so hard on us. And I wish that I knew, because I know you girls know that, Food has healed so many people from the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, it's it's just, I wish, I wish we had had all of some, this information in the past. You know, she did a lot of holistic therapies and she did acupuncture, which she always said completely saved her life. Yeah. 
And I know Susie is a big fan of acupuncture yes. too. <laughs> but you know, it was just, it was destroying her body every year a little bit more and a little bit more. And this yeah. is so interesting because from what I know, a lot of autoimmune issues have become so prevalent most recently, maybe in the 80s and the 90s, versus when our parents and grandparents were young, where kids didn't have brain cancer back then. And a lot of these, maybe some people had some autoimmune stuff, but it wasn't as prevalent as it is today. If you look at statistics, asthma and brain cancer and cancers in general and autoimmune stuff and idiopathic stuff where they don't exactly know how it like MS, they don't exactly know yeah. what causes it, but it's there. And they know your yes. body's attacking itself. And that is much more prevalent in today's day and age than when your mom was young. So it is interesting that she was one of the few that actually experienced this from the age of 11. Well, yeah. I, I also think it's like this story that you're telling me right now, this is my story. This is your story. This is both of our stories. And there are mm -hmm. so many people out there who have experienced this. And the more we talk about it, and the more we bring awareness to it, the more we can help other people heal. Because you keep saying, if only I had known. And that's exact. Every time you say that, it's like a dagger in the heart. I feel the exact <sighs> same way, Kim. I'm like, yeah. if only we I had know. known. Because it was I side know. effect after side effect, which breeded a new pill and a new drug to treat that side effect. And it was just endless amounts yeah. of pills. And yes, my mom did some holistic things too, but it's like holistic medicine cannot fight against all these drugs. Like you have to, no. it's it's not enough to do, do complementary medicine. You really have to change your lifestyle and your diet and get off these most of your medications, if not all. And that's what we didn't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, don't get me wrong. I'm all for medication. I think Western medicine is very important too. And I just think that food has been just so swept under the rug. And it has helped so many people now, now that all this information is out there with inflammation, which is basically what's at the base of rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. So I just, oh gosh, you know. And I'll many diseases. Yeah. Inflammation yes. is the inflammation. Ca root cause of so many imbalances and diseases. Everything. So it is the basis. Yeah. It is the basis for every disease. Yeah. Inflammation. Food Heals Nation, listen to me. I am <laughs> speaking the truth. I am not a doctor. I don't have a I don't have a degree, but I know this. It is it is a fact. Inflammation is the basis of every disease. Preach Amen. It. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So going through the childhood that I went through, and of course, whenever I tell this story, I just always have to remind people that whatever trouble I went through my mother had it so much worse. She was dealing with the fear of having a young kid that maybe she had to leave alone in this world because she was in really, really bad shape. And I was facing the fear of losing my mom. So living in this kind of state of emergency mode all the time, kind of fight or flight all the time, it completely messed up with so many things in my brain and my way of functioning. And it kind of created a two side, you know, two sides of the same coin. And one is great. One was the fact that I absolutely fell in love with cooking at a very, very young age. I kind of interpreted that when we sat down to eat a meal together, it was kind of this pause button, this like magical pause button that would just put all problems on hold. And it was just made her so happy. She loved to eat. She loved good food. Mm -hmm. So I started to learn cooking from very, very young age. I was cooking, you know, Thanksgiving for the entire family at 15. Wow. So that, that kind of cooking. So that was a great part. But another part is that, of course, dealing with all this turmoil and feeling that I couldn't talk to anybody about it, feeling that I had to be this perfect kid, you know, not cause trouble, get perfect grades in school, not stay out late with my friends. I just, I wanted to make my mother happy. And our main goal in life was just to keep her alive. That was like, we need to keep you alive until, you know, at least I can get a job. Or just, <laughs> you know, I don't know, at least be old enough to understand what's going on. And of course, I would have loved to have her for most of my life, but that was just not going to happen. Right. And yeah, I just, it was really hard. And of course, when you love food, and you love cooking, and you've got difficult emotional situation going on, you turn to food. And I became a huge overeater, a huge emotional eater. I it caused so many problems with my relationship with food, I just did not know how to stop. 
I developed chronic gastritis, which might seem like something that anybody goes through and is fine, but my case was chronic. It was pain for over two years, Mm -hmm. no relief from medication. I mean, it just, I know that you girls know that having any kind of emotional turmoil, negativity, just fear, that can affect your entire body. Of course, especially your gut and your intestines. Yes, yes. So So, that's the first place it goes. Absolutely, absolutely. So we were kind of just navigating through these waters. And, you know, many years later, many years after she had passed, I just made it my mission to, you know, to find something that would heal me, that would make me improve my relationship with food. And just by coincidence, I found veganism Mm. and it changed my life. Wow. Yep. How did you find it? (laughs) Well, I had read about it. I kind of grabbed Alicia Silverstone's book, The Kind Diet. That was one Um, of my first forays into it too. Yes. She's just amazing. I love her. And that book is like the perfect first window into what's going on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I found it right before I was jumping on a flight from New York to Spain. Mm -hmm. And I read it during the flight. I cried for the entire thing. It was so embarrassing. Thank goodness my husband wasn't with me. (laughs) It's just so embarrassed. And I couldn't believe it. But you know, I had trouble finding kind of getting my sea legs after that. It took me a while. And then I watched the film Veducated. And it was the first time that I kind of dared watch what was going on in our agriculture system right. with animals. Yeah. And I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe that that was legal. I couldn't believe that that was actually happening and that we just were all kind of contributing to it by even by not knowing. So for the first time, food became this thing that was not about myself. It was not only about soothing myself or making me feel better or eating something when I was missing my mom. It became about something that was bigger than me. Yeah. And that was the most life-changing thing. I call veganism my little rescuer because it really, really was. Well, that's very powerful because you're like, the choices I'm making aren't just about me. They're about the environment. They're about the animals. They're about the world as a whole. And that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. We have all this power and we feel powerless most of the time. You know, whenever I hear somebody talking about the state of the world, all the problems that are out there, and just thinking, if only somebody would do something about it, there are so many of these issues that we can do something about with something as simple as the plate that's in front of us. And it's not that it's, it's not like it's this huge sacrifice because we have so much amazing food that we can make with amazing plants. And after that, you know, it was, it was all at first about the animals. But when I found out about the amazing health benefits of eating, you know, a really whole foods based plant based whole foods, plant-based diet. It was just like I was hooked. I mean, there was no turning back at that point. Absolutely. And it's like you can, there's all this stuff about in the media about voting and how important it is. And of course, don't get me wrong, it is, but you can vote three times a day for the type of world that you want by what you put on your plate. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you start forming your website and everything that you're doing today? Yeah, well, the website is really uh, new. We formed it last year Mm -hmm. in 2015, my husband and I, and that that was a great collaboration because my husband is a practicing medical doctor here in Spain. He's an allergy specialist. And it was great because it was the perfect combination. I came in with all of the culinary aspects and, of course, helping people with all the emotional aspects that surround eating, finding healing, finding confidence, and finding kind of healthy habits that can really last you a lifetime. Not only these just strict diets that will last you for a little bit and then you have to find something else and you're on the wagon, off the wagon. I mean, this just really great habits and little tricks that will help you on your daily life. So that's kind of my side. But of course, his side with all of his medical background is great because I always love giving people information that is based on facts on science and, you know, so that people can feel confident with the information that we give them. It's so important. And I love that you guys are tag teaming it to make the world a better place with both of your (laughs) expertise. And what brought you to Spain? Well, my husband's job, he got a job at a hospital here and we came and we loved it and we stayed. Awesome. (laughs) We've been here 
We've been here for seven years. We're originally from Venezuela, both of us. Mm -hmm. I lived in New York as well. My family is from New York. What part? And, oh, well, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Woodstock, New York. <laughs> yeah, we're men over. my mom's Manhattan, Susie's Long Island. Long Island. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And how is it eating? Sorry. I was, I think I was just going to ask the same question. Okay. You're going to ask, how is it being a vegan in yeah. Madrid? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, people think it's really hard. And well, the, the first, whole ham my, movement. You've got, oh my God, you, go, bon. at, you <laughs> go anywhere and you have these ham legs, these pig legs hanging from the ceiling they're practically decoration at people's homes is really disturbing oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's horrible but there is a huge huge vegan movement in spain especially here in madrid probably in other cities too like barcelona but here in madrid it's exploding there are so wow. many vegan restaurants there are so many options once you get to know the local cuisine and there's just yeah, there's just, I mean, a new vegan restaurant opens up all the time. It's crazy. We've got two fully vegan supermarkets, little supermarkets, wow. like little stores, but that carry anything your heart desires. And yeah, it's really growing. There's a huge animal rights scene here as well. So I was just going to ask you, do you think that that movement is from animal rights or for health or both? That's what I was going to ask her. Well, I got to it first. <laughs> <laughs> we're just Allie, Allie and I are starting to share a brain. I know we're way too oh. in sync today. Oh, that's wonderful. That's the way to have a podcast. I mean, how <laughs> else are you going to do it? No, literally, we're becoming like sisters where we're like completing <laughs> each other's sentences, and it didn't used to be this way. We used to think differently, and now our thought processes are like melding. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. That's so sweet. <laughs> I think that. Well, I, I'm kind of guessing here because I'm sure that people have their own reasons for doing it. But, well, but I you're there. Say, so what you What's your you know more than we do. So yeah, I mean, what do you my think? impression is that I think it's more based on animal rights than health. Yeah, and health is kind of a great side effect. All of the, everyone talks about it, but I also see it in some of the restaurants. Some of the restaurants that pop up, they're just they practically don't have the word green on anything on the menu. So that kind of gives you the impression that it's just you know a restaurant that's serving food to cater to just kind of you know, animal rights folks who are, who came back from a protest, we're, they're big, big, big on protests here for animal rights reasons. And they all kind of go to the restaurants afterwards to hang out. And that's one side. But then you have these other amazing restaurants that are all organic, everything is homemade, even the bread, you know, they've got gluten free this and that and amazing green juices. So I think we've got a little bit of everything, but most of it is based on, you know, the animal rights issue. You know, what's so interesting, and this is just because you said this, and I've thought about this because I myself, I know enough about gluten where I've listened to different scientists talk about it. I know a lot of people have sensitivity to it. I don't believe for myself, my own body has a reaction to it, but I know a lot of people do. And from what I understand, there's obviously a difference in the grain and the breads that, that there are used in Europe and baked in Europe versus what we have in the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you know a lot of people that are gluten-free in Spain? Do you have a lot of friends yes. that you do? Okay. Yes. Yes. It's become such a big issue here. And I can tell you that from also my husband's pers perspective because he sees yes. the patient. Yeah. So he does also see a lot of people who believe they have celiac disease but they don't actually have it. So, and I'm sure that's true in the United States as well. Mm -hmm. But there, there, it's such a big movement that many, many restaurants, and I'm talking about not only the vegan restaurants, but mainstream restaurants have a menu that is gluten-free, a separate menu that is completely gluten-free, including pizza joints and burger places. So it's really amazing that it's really grown here. So what about the animal rights activists, because I guess I may be completely wrong here, but I always thought it was more of an American factory farming problem where you see the abuse of animals. And I'm not talking about China and the dog festival, because obviously that is horrifying. But mm -hmm. we picture places like Spain as more refined and not, you know, doing those animal practices. Or at least not having the large factory farms focusing solely on profit, but maybe... I also agree, like we picture, you know, smaller farms that the animals are not treated as poorly. So what's really going on in, in Spain? Is it a big, big issue? Are they protesting what's going on in other countries? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, here we have two big issues. One of them is, of course, regular meat consumption, dairy and eggs. And the answer is 
everything that's going on that is horrible in other places is going on here too. Mm -hmm. It is true that there might be some smaller farms in villages across Spain that, you know, they slaughter their own animals and it, that's not a factory farm. Mm -hmm. But the food that reaches our supermarkets on a mass level, that's not where our food is coming from, same mm -hmm. as in the United States. And of course, the other huge problem that kind of really gets animal rights activists together here is bullfighting. It's still oh, very, yeah. it's still very present here. And they've kind of banned it in a couple of cities, but it's nowhere near where it should be. And it's just so barbaric. It's because that's not even people that's, who are that's just eating. That's for sport. Because, yeah, I mean, it's something that you think should have ended with the Romans or I something I was just going like to say, it's like gladiators <laughs> in the yeah, ring, except they're bulls. I know. It's, yes, it's exactly the same. But yeah, I we have the same issues. Other countries in Europe have the same issues. I'm not sure if the sizes of the factory farms are are the same as the ones you have in the United States, but absolutely, same issues happen here. We're silenced because... <laughs> Because that is not what I would assume. I drive past, you know, if you drive north on the five, you drive in here from L.A. north, you drive past a le very large cattle farm. and It's sad. And, and I've traveled through Europe and I've never seen such a thing, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And yeah, yeah. You know, I know what you mean because I have also traveled across the country here in Spain. And what you see are these little cows in the fields and you feel, okay, well, at least that's a little bit better, right? But that's, you know, it's not enough to kind of meat demand. So uh, sadly, we have factory farm problems. Is meat, is meat still pretty pricey compared to the, I don't know when the last time you've been to the States, but meat is subsidized here in the United States. Um, yeah. That's why it is so cheap. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, way that they treat the animals uh, is subpar and that's why it is so cheap. Is meat still, is meat cheap? Because when, no. I, li when I was there, when I lived in Europe, it was not, it was quite expensive. It Yes, it is quite expensive. Okay. So thank goodness for that. That's at least something that, but still, you know, people buy it. I mean, yeah. it's just, and one of the things we have is, for example, cow's meat is very expensive, but pork is very inexpensive. It's crazy inexpensive. Lamb is crazy inexpensive because I think that's, I don't know, they probably have a lot more farms dedicated to these animals. They're probably factory farms. And yeah, those animals, when the meat that comes from those animals is very inexpensive. So people are still filling. I mean, if you go to a, a restaurant that doesn't have, that isn't very vegan friendly, they put ham on everything. They put, you know, it's just, you can't find a salad that doesn't have some kind of animal product in it. However, I don't want to scare people off from coming to Spain because there are so many other options too. So There really are. Yeah, I mean, if absolutely. you look across Europe, maybe not in Scandinavia because they don't have a very long growing season, but they can still get it from the south of Europe. There are a lot of, I feel like, options that especially in like Greece and the, the southernmost states and Italy and Spain, there's a lot of vegetable plates absolutely. or appetizers and, or small yeah. platters that, that exist. Yes. And remember the diet that is present here is the Mediterranean diet. So we have all these incredible vegetables. One of the main a kind of exports that Spain has is agriculture. So the produce that you'll find here, it's just unbelievable. I come from Venezuela where you have this amazing tropical produce and this is just as good. I mean, it's really, really remarkable. We've got organic farms. There's everything. There's everything you need to be a healthy, happy vegan in Spain. Well, you sound very passionate and we know you are. And that's what really encouraged you to start your own business, right? So tell yeah. us about your online program and what you do and why it's important to you. Absolutely. So we created brownbull.com, which is our website, and within it, my brownbull, which is our online program. And we just wanted to create a space for people to, first of all, learn how to cook amazing vegan food. I think that when you start with the food, it's so much easier to kind of get a handle on the rest of what you need to be a happy vegan because the food is what kind of limits us. We're afraid that we're not going to eat something that's flavorful, that's nutritious. We fear that we're not going to have a balanced meal. So when you tackle the food, kind of half of the fears go flying out the window. So I teach you how to cook amazing vegan food. I teach you why we cook a certain way, why we use a certain technique so that 
you don't have to rely on recipes all the time. You can start kind of gaining confidence in your own vegan kitchen at home. And of course, we talk, that's kind of one side of what we do in the online program. But the other side is all of the emotional aspects related to eating. You know, I just find it fascinating that we've become so obsessed with the numbers and what and the ingredients. And, you know, we've kind of limited eating in those terms, how many carbs and how much protein and how many calories and how much do we weigh and what do we need to do? How many calories do we need to burn in the gym? And none of these diet books or experts or, you know, nobody is talking about the emotional side of things, why we turn to food in an unhealthy way, why we depend on products and we feel we can't live without them. So to me, it's really important to help people in kind of in a way I wish somebody had talked to me when I was going through all my emotional eating problems and overeating, portion control. I It was really hard for me. And I, I kind of want to help guide people in that direction and absolutely help people stop dieting. Because if it's one thing I learned through all of my years with struggling with food, it's that diets don't work. And veganism for me is absolutely not a diet. The fact that you can have a vegan burger that is made completely out of whole foods and super healthy, I mean, that's just, it doesn't compare, right? Exactly. You, yeah. So it's, we kind of tackle both of those areas. And of course, having a doctor in-house means that he gets to check every single little word that comes out related to your body or to the way your digestive system functions, anything at all. So it's all based on kind of biology and understanding how our bodies work, but also kind of healing the issues that have troubled us and that have made us run to food to solve something. And one of those big issues for me, and it's one of those really, really big, important pillars at Brown Bowl, is accepting our bodies and the way, you know, talking to ourselves in a kinder way, accepting where we are right now, and just feeling that we love ourselves. It's so important. And nobody's talking about that. And in today's world, there's so much pressure. There's yeah. so much pressure to be perfect, to be skinny, to, you know, to look like the girls in, on TV, in the magazine. And it's such an essential part. It was an essential part in my journey. We think that it's the other way around, right? That we have to control our food and and lose weight, and then we're going to feel good. And what people don't realize is it's the other way around. Kim, I think this is so important, almost, almost more important. Dare I say this, Allie? You, you can ready? say it. I know what you're going to say. You do? <laughs> yes. What am I going to say? You're going to say ah. that the, healing your emotional self is more important than figuring out the food you eat. Damn it. She's right. But you're yes. going to say it in different <laughs> words, right? <laughs> well, th- there's a reason behind it. I agree. Be- okay, so this goes even beyond matter. It goes beyond food. It goes to one of our other passions, which is our spirituality. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that when I was in massage school and I was in this fantastic school called Ipsby in Culver City, and they addressed so much more than just helping people feel better by rubbing out the knots in their muscles. It was They addressed so much more than that. A lot of it was energy-based. And my favorite teacher, my deep tissue teacher, Val Gwynn, who practices in Los Angeles, go look her up, <laughs> uh, she told a tale about I don't know if I've told this story before here, a story about people in a concentration camp Mm -hmm. and how a man, one man was given the same horrible food that everybody was given, but he was, had a revelation by God. He was, he had a meditation, a prayer, whatever it was. And he was told chew everything a hundred times and be grateful for what you have. Mm. And whether this is true or not, we all know that sometimes things get created. Who I don't know the name of the man. I don't have factual it's information. A pa- it's a parable. Yeah. It's a yeah. But yeah. he chewed it a hundred times and he lived. Whereas other people that just looked at the horrible bowl of whatever they got and knew it was crap and didn't think they could live didn't. And he was grateful. He was grateful and he took what he was given and knew that it was enough. And that is mind over matter. Mm -hmm. And the way that I feel like I also look to the historical roots of how Americans eat. We are all an immigrant nation aside from the Native Americans who lived here before us. We're all immigrants at some point or another, all coming here for a better life and always looking for food is number one, right? If If you could finally get to America and feed your family a decent meal, then you had made it, then you had money, then you had status. And that continued with the burger culture that evolved in the 50s and so on and so forth. I feel like I should write a book about that. Yeah, you should. Anyway. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> well, oh but anyway, 
but, but beyond that, it's then you look deeper than that, and it's we need food to sustain us. But there, you know, we've developed so many Americans in particular. I know that these issues exist in the Western world, but like we've developed eating disorders and emotional eating and where a lot of people are obese and eating poor quality food. And, and it's not just what you eat. It's not just the quality of what you eat. It's how you're eating it. Are you eating it with fam friends and family? Are you eating it in front of the TV? Are you eating it while driving? Is it a drive through meal? Mm -hmm. It's not just the quality and the quantity. It is also how you're eating it and how you are taking it in, so to speak. Is it squelching down emotions you don't want to deal with? Yep. Or is yeah. it nourishing you and making you feel good and giving you, giving you energy? That's why you still have to be grateful for the Ben and Jerry's when you're doing it, okay? <laughs> well, if you're going to do it, you're going to... I did this the other day, actually, because I yeah. wanted some ice cream. Yeah. And it wasn't almond milk ice cream. And I was feeling guilty. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have that. I still want to lose five pounds. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat it and I'm going to enjoy what I'm eating and fuck the rest of it. And I enjoyed it. And I didn't need, I didn't eat half of it. I didn't eat the whole thing. I didn't even half of it. What I had, I enjoyed. And I was like, that's enough. Good for you. It's like, that's, yeah, that's absolutely. It's like you said, if you are using food to drown your feelings, even if it's vegan food, it's not going to be a healthy option, right? It's how, absolutely. It's how yeah. you feel about the food as it goes in. And I agree with you guys that the emotional component really is number one, but sometimes you have to use the food to get there. For in my case, I was like, I changed my food and my life changed. But mm -hmm. the ultimate transformation didn't happen until I then made the emotional connection. Once I did that, it all fell into place. But I had to have the nutrition step to get me to the emotion step. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we all have to start somewhere. And so many of the people that join our, many of the people that join our online program are fully vegan and they want support. And many of them are just kind of figuring out what vegan is. And I always tell people, start where you're at and let's start taking steps, even if they're tiny, but let's start taking steps. And anything you do is amazing. And you're absolutely right. The way we approach our food, the way we approach the plate that's in front of us, the thoughts we're having while we're eating food, people don't talk about this and they're going to think that I'm totally woo-woo, but it has absolutely changed my life. And it's what finally got me healing from all of these issues that I was going through that even got physical because having these stomach pains for two years, I mean, that was just horrible. It was there was no relief from any pain medication, no relief from any treatment. And the, the relief had to come from inside. And it's crazy that two years of suffering in that way can receive healing from just changing your mindset from healing the things that happened to you from trying to realize that maybe your life isn't in that same place anymore and that now things are okay and that you can start with, you know, taking little steps to where you want to go. Hey, Kim, how do you say vegan in Spanish? <laughs> Vegano. <laughs> Vegano. <laughs> Vegano. Vegano. Love it. All right. We'll be right back to talk about Kim's little happy Buddha trick. Food Heals Nation, we're so excited to announce that we are on Patreon. Patreon is ongoing crowdfunding for creators. It's a place to give back to your favorite creators for making the stuff that you love. So why are we on Patreon? The Food Heals podcast is free and always will be. And Susie and I are entrepreneurial rock stars who will work all day and all night to bring you the best possible content we can create but we ladies gotta eat. <laughs> Organic and plant-based, of course. By working together with our friends and fans, our intention is to bring you incredible content like video trainings, new podcast episodes, classes, discounts on our favorite products and services, opportunities for free swag bag giveaways. <laughs> we know how Food Hills Nation loves those swag bags and so much more. And besides putting in our own blood, sweat, and tears, we have to spend a lot to bring you the most high quality content. We pay copywriters to bring you top-notch show notes. We pay hosting fees to host over 100 podcast episodes to date. We pay videographers to film our classes. We pay editors to edit our video classes and our podcast. We pay designers to design high-quality websites, and the list just goes on and on. But don't worry, we're not going to take your donation and run. We're going to give you exclusive perks for your generous donations. Check out all the perks like shoutouts for your business on the Food Heals podcast, multiple ebooks and workshops on monetizing your business, doing a five day juice cleanse, and smoothie recipe guides. 
There's so many perks. One of my favorite perks is an exclusive VIP podcast, Emotional Freedom Techniques, Tapping for Releasing Trauma, with our very own Susie Hardy. That's me. I know. You can literally listen to this over and over again in order to heal yourself. So we need your help to create even more content for you, our Food Heals Nation. Join us on Patreon today and see what perks are right for you. That's patreon.com slash Food Heals Nation. You are listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. We are back with Kim Sujavolsky, certified plant-based cook and founder of the website brownbowl.com. Kim is passionate about delicious vegan cooking and wellness after having grown up with an ill parent, as we talked about, and discovering that there is a link between food and healing, as we all know. Mm -hmm. Kim teaches in her online program, The Two Pillars of Healthy Eating, The Quality and Quantity of Food. And she's a big proponent of why sleeping, de-stressing, and removing negativity are key factors for a healthy lifestyle and making healthier choices with food. But first... What is your little happy Buddha trick? <laughs> We're dying <laughs> yeah. to know. I know this one spikes so much curiosity in people. The little happy Buddha trick is just kind of an image I want you to hold in your head. And the little happy Buddha is actually your wiser self. So we kind of, we've been taught to look for advice for our own bodies in all of these external places, right? We buy diet books. I mean, it's one of the, I'm sure it's one of the, highest selling book genres there are. Heck yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure of it. And, you know, we kind of, we're looking outside all the time at all of these different places and nobody is going to know what is good for you, what is good for your digestive system, what is good for your soul, what is good for your eating habits other than yourself. You have this amazing little wiser part of yourself that knows exactly where you want to go. So if you want to be free from emotional eating, from overeating, from dieting, if you just want to feel, you know, food freedom, body freedom, if you want to feel confident in your skin, if you want to feel happy and healthy and happy when you're trying on a bikini and going to the beach and not even worrying about it, whatever it is that your goal is. And usually I I tell people that the idea is not to picture a specific visual. So not a six pack abs and you know not, nothing like that but think of how it would feel like to actually reach that point of total confidence and total just freedom to be who you are and live the life you want to live so that wiser part of yourself that's the little happy buddha so i want you to picture <laughs> that you have a little happy buddha inside your head and that's that wiser part of yourself that wiser part of yourself knows where you're going it knows without question, and it knows what you need to do to get you there. So all we have to do is quiet the mind, get centered. Whenever we sit down to eat, whenever we decide if we're going to skip a workout or go and take a long walk or go to yoga or try some meditation practices or go to sleep a little bit earlier or get rid of stress. So this is the part of you that will know what choice to make. We all know it, right? If we're sitting in front, if we've been feeling anxious and we're in a hurry and we want to eat something, we all know that the bowl of greens and beans and whole grains is better for us than a drive through burger, right? right? Nobody needs help, external help to know that. Well, you can make these decisions at every single meal because every choice we make is our own. You can make that choice with the little help of that little happy Buddha. And it's just the wiser part of yourself that will know how to guide you to that place. You just have to close your eyes for a second, visualize where it is you want to be, how that place will feel like, and just let that wiser part of yourself guide you. Just imagine that the little Buddha is sitting down next to you when you're sitting down to eat. And especially for people who are really struggling with overeating, with compulsive overeating, with binge eating, this is something that can really help because it's such a compulsion, you know, to just gobble up everything in sight without even blinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I smell an I smell an app. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make an app of the little happy Buddha. It's a great oh, idea. I'll whisper it. Make an app. Idea. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's what it is. Basically, it's just letting your own self guide you. You know what is good for you. And you can make those choices. We feel that we are powerless. And I just want to remind people that we have all the power. We just have all the power. It reminds me of the, you know, the cartoons or wherever you see this with the angel and the devil on someone's shoulder and the angel's telling you what the right thing is to do and the devil's telling you the wrong thing to do and it's who, who are you going to listen to? Absolutely. That is exactly what the little happy Buddha is. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, the little happy Buddha also has another side to it. It's that if you stray, if you had a misstep, if you had something that was not vegan and you are vegan, if you just ate something mindlessly and you, it's something that you would feel bad afterwards, that little happy Buddha can see the bigger picture and can tell you, don't stress out about it. Don't have this amazing guilt trip over it and then under eat in the next meal, you know, just relax. It was a mistake. We all made a mistake. And sometimes it's not even a mistake. You know, I learned so much from the issues that I had to go through. None of them were mistakes. They just got me to where I am today. And it's this really happy and balanced place and this amazing place. So that's another side of the happy Buddha. It's to slow you down and kind of pat you on the back and say, you've done a lot of great things in your life. So relax, you're fine. Look, every so-called mistake is an opportunity for learning, right? Yes, and if you can see it that way, then you can be proactive about learning your lesson and moving on instead of repeating the mistake and learning the lesson over and over until it's, you know, beating you over the head. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, mindful eating is something that we teach as well. And it's something that is so related to that little happy Buddha. We are just on this constant state of rushing stress, no matter what jobs we have, no matter what our, even if we're a stay at home mom, even if, you know, we're a student, we've just got so many pressures in, you know, life today. And being able to slow down, to picture that little happy Buddha and slow down when you eat, to eat consciously with awareness, that can take you, I mean, to incredible places. Mindful eating was one of those things that completely saved me. It just completely saved me from years of dieting, of trying every single diet known to man. And having that horrible feeling you get when you failed and when you have to stop it because it was so horrible. So mindful eating is something that is really freeing and that little happy Buddha trick will help you a lot. I think that's a great trick. Like Susie said, it's probably an app. I think <laughs> that would be a good one. I love it. Um, I love it. So where can everyone find out about your program, find you online, follow you, stalk you, etc.? Absolutely. Well, we're everywhere. You can visit our website, which is brownbull.com. And that's B-R-O-W-N-B-L-E.com. And in our website, you can find everything. So there we have, you know, amazing videos that you can start trying out recipes. And we have incredible blog posts, which you can read or you can listen to. There's a little play button if you want to hear my voice reading them out to you. Love and it. yeah, we've got a brand new baby podcast, which I'm so excited about. You can oh. find it on Stitcher or iTunes. Yes. Congrats. You just, thank you so much. You can find it by searching for Brown Bowl. And in our website, you can find out more about our online program, which is kind of where all the vegan meat of the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really, it's really amazing. We have an amazing free, totally free mini e-course, which is called uh, Three Steps to Kind of Put an End to Dieting and Find Healthy Eating Habits for Life. And that's a great kind of intro into what we do so you can get to know me before you kind of dive into the online program to see if you, it's kind of right for you. And we have an amazing surprise for Food Heals listeners. Ooh. We are lowering the price of our online program down to $8.99, which is super affordable. Yeah. And so the first 25 people to join up, they will get this amazing discount. And this discount is for life. So for as long as you're a continuous member with us, this will be your price, even if the program goes up. And, you know, our online program is amazing. It's ongoing. So new videos are added every week. So if something comes up, some nutrition information that you have to have, you're going to be updated and it's really, really special. And of course, you can find us on social media too. You can find us as Brown Bowl everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and we are Brown Bowl Kitchen on Twitter. And $8.99 is per month? 
per month, $8.99 per month. That's the little special price for the first 25 people to sign up. And Kim, what's your discount code for them to get the coupon? Absolutely. For the coupon, the code is FOODHEALS. Perfect. So go to their website, sign up using the coupon code FOODHEALS. You will get the monthly membership for $8.99 per month, which is like the cheapest membership I know of. So I know it's worth it. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Can you leave us with a tweetable? Absolutely. So I guess I would say no matter what weight, state, or place you're in right now, you are enough. Love it. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. I could talk to you guys forever. I know. (laughs) Go get some sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Will do. Spanish time zone. (laughs) The first 25 people who join mybrownbull.com will get the entire program at the lowest price they have ever offered at only $8.99 per month. My Brown Bull is an online membership program designed to help you find balance with delicious, health-giving foods, and still enjoy your favorites. They teach you how to improve your relationship with food and stop worrying about being in control. And stop the endless dieting cycle and find your own inner health guru. No restriction, no deprivation. They teach you how to improve your plant-based cooking skills and create delicious dishes from comfort food classics to brunch, food for the holidays, simple everyday meals, pantry staples, international cuisine, and more. They teach you to gain your confidence as a vegan and find your sweet spot. And they teach you how to learn to love your body, where it's at, and why this is the secret weapon to healthy eating. And new content comes out every single week. And only for Food Heals listeners, they are offering the program at a discounted price, just $8.99 per month to the first 25 people to join the program. And this price will be guaranteed for as long as you're a continuous member. Use the coupon code FOODHEALSNATION upon checkout to get your discount. And for all the show notes from today's episode, go to foodhealsnation.com. See you next time. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. (laughs) 